Welcome back to Optical Remote Sensing, a video series developed as a part of the subject Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS at the Australian National University. I'm David Summers. And this video is going to look at uh, the interaction of um, electromagnetic radiation and the atmosphere. In the previous videos we talked a lot about EM radiation and how we can exploit that for remote sensing. But the reality is that much of the energy emitted by the sun does not reach the Earth or is not useful in remote sensing, optical remote sensing. So here we have a, a diagram showing the electromagnetic spectrum and um, you can see the top line is the spectrum emitted by the sun, the radiation emitted by the sun, and that bottom line is the spectrum that reaches us at sea level. And you can see that the bits that are blacked out, they don't get through. So it's only the white under that bottom black line that reaches the Earth's surface at sea level. And the reason for this is that the EM radiation is interacting with the atmosphere and is subject to a number of phenomena such as transmission, absorption, emission, specular reflection and scattering. And these all happen through interaction with just the particles of the atmosphere itself such as ozone and oxygen or uh, water molecules suspended in the atmosphere, pollution or other dust particles that are in the atmosphere. Each of these have different effects on the radiation as it passes through the atmosphere and it affects how much of that radiation reaches the Earth's surface. So in these next slides we'll talk about some of these processes. Scattering is a process where the um, incident radiation passing through the atmosphere hits particles in the atmosphere and is scattered into a whole range of uh, different pathways. And it's actually a phenomenon that we witness in our daily lives. For example, we see white clouds as white clouds because incident um, visible radiation, visible light radiation, is interacting with water particles, water molecules in the atmosphere that are approximately the same size as the wavelength of the visible light. And this result results in the whole range of the visible spectrum being scattered to the same amount and as a result we see clouds as white. Similarly we see the sky as blue as a result of Rayleigh scattering. In fact we see the sky both as blue and as red as a result of Rayleigh scattering. The, um, the very tiny particles of atmospheric gases in the, in the atmosphere scatter uh, the blue light more than the red light because the blue light has a smaller uh, wavelength during the day and then during the evening or at sunset and sunrise when the sun has to travel further through the atmosphere the longer wavelength red light radiation is scattered more and as a result we see the red sunsets that we're so, all so fond of. And there's also non-selective scattering where there's a, a wide range of very large and small particles relative to the wavelength of the radiation resulting in a scattering that produces a grey mess that we know of as smog. So this scattering is affected by the wavelength of the radiation and the particle size and also the number of particles and the distance travelled. And while it produces interesting phenomena for us as observers on the Earth, it also creates uh, some problems in remote sensing. There's also atmospheric absorption where EM radiation is absorbed by components of the atmosphere um, at different wavelengths. Uh, the largest contributors to this are uh, uh, ozone and carbon dioxide and water. And you can see here, uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum, and you can see that the brown areas are absorbed in the atmosphere, and so they're not making it down to the Earth's surface, and the green areas are. So in the ultraviolet, there's a huge area that's not um, transmitted through the atmosphere due to absorption. But when we get into the visible, it's quite, quite a lot of it uh, passes through the atmosphere. And then passing into the infrared range, there are sections, indeed they're almost like bands, that are absorbed by the atmosphere. And before we move into the thermal um, wavelengths, where again there are large uh, whole swathes of wavelengths that do not make it through. And this is important, and this is um, obviously because this information isn't available, and so sensors are typically built, designed around these, around the, the areas of transmissivity, so that you only put bands where there's the available incident radiation to, to make those bands useful. 
Uh, alternatively, you don't put bands where this atmospheric absorption occurs. Importantly, uh, absorption happens as incident radiation and as reflected radiation. So the, 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 the processes of absorption are happening as the radiation comes in from the sun. It's also subject to scattering, and then it's reflected off the target surface, the Earth's surface, before it's uh, reflected back to the sensor, and in that journey it's also subject to absorption. EM radiation is also lost during the process of reflectance itself, so different surfaces reflect, um, reflect back the, the reflected radiation at different angles, and not all of that is going to uh, reach the sensor. So on a very smooth surface, for example, you can expect a large amount of information to be transmitted back to or reflected back to the sensor. Whereas in a very rough surface, that incident radiation can be reflected back at a whole range of angles, many of which won't be directed back towards the sensor. And this, can, this is really a result of the surface that the, the, the radiation is being reflected back off. So this slide just provides an analogy of what's... Um, happening in the atmosphere and as the radiation is being reflected back off the Earth's surface. So you can see here there's a whole range of different processes. There's, um, there's shadow uh, on the deck there as well as full sunlight and then there's uh, reflected images on the water's surface. There's uh, a, a gradient of colour that's being transmitted through the water that we're, we're getting back uh, at the sensor which in this case is a, is a camera. And there's also backscatter back towards the, the observer. So these are all processes that affect uh, how the radiation, uh, how we collect images and, the, and some of the things we have to consider as we process them. And this is an actual example from an image that demonstrates those same points. You can see there's, uh, there's cloud and haze and smoke in the image that's obscuring the Earth's surface, which is normally the target of remote sensing. There's also sunlight being backscattered back to the observer, in this case the sensor. And there's also snow, which is easily cons confused with some of these, uh, these other uh, objects, cloud and haze and smoke in the, in the image. And this can really complicate uh, image analysis and is something that uh, often needs to be dealt with in order to um, really analyse your, your target surface. So this, has been, um, so this has been the interactions with the atmosphere. And in the next video, we'll talk about spectral response in optical remote sensing.